Okay, so today we are going to work on our double exposure lesson. To get started, you have to go to Photoshop. We're going to start at our home screen. And we're going to go to Import and Open. Select Photos. And we're going to find the portrait photo. A little word of advice, it's best when you're doing your photos to use a picture with a blank background. So if you need to take one, you can use our blue backdrop. Um, you could also just find one on the internet. It's easier if it's blank. Um, if not, it's still possible. It's just a few extra steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is crop my image. So I went to the crop tool on the side. And I'm going ahead. I'm leaving it landscape. So this this dimension where it's wider than it is longer is called landscape when it's longer so if it looked like this that would be portrait so i'm going to keep mine landscape because i know that my mountain photo is landscape and i want them to have the same dimensions so i'm just dragging the corners that's how i'm setting my crop and then when i'm done i could go ahead and press the word done Okay, now I'm going to open my nature photo, but I'm not going to go back to the home screen to open it. I'm going to go to the little photo icon at the bottom of the screen. It's above the eyedropper tool. From there, I'm going to select photos, and then I'm going to find my mountains. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stretch it so that, stretch the corners so that they reach the edge of the screen. I'm going to make it a little longer. And then I'm going to move it over slightly so that the mountains are centered. When I like the way it looks, I'm going to press done in the top corner. Now you should see that the nature layer is on the top layer. I'm actually going to rename mine so you guys can um, know which layer I'm referring to. I'm going to rename that one nature and I'm going to rename my portrait layer to portrait. So to rename them all you have to do is click on the three dots and it'll have an option to say rename. So I've got my nature layer on top. I've got my portrait layer on the bottom. I'm going to go to my nature layer. I'm going to select it, which means I'm just turning it blue, so it's highlighted blue. And then I'm going to turn the invisibility off, which is just done by clicking on the eyeball. Once you click on the eyeball, it'll draw a little line through the eyeball, which means that the invisibility is off. Then I'm going to go back to the portrait layer. I'm going to, what I mean by go back, I mean just select it with your finger so that it's highlighted blue. This time, I'm going to use the skills that we learned in the last project to select my portrait. So I'm going to go to the lasso tool. I'm going to hold down on my lasso tool. And I'm going to use the word select subject. From here, my little marching ants show up. I'm going to zoom in. I see a lot of imperfections. I talked about feathering last class period. In order to add feathering, which just makes the edges softer, you have to go to the tool selection area of the lasso tool and you press the three dots. This will pull up the feather option. I'm keeping mine low because you don't want it to blur too much. You just want it to be a nice soft edge. Um, so I have mine set at a 7.1. I'm going to keep it at that. A reminder that the top two squares, they're like a lighter gray, they add to the selection. The middle squares, where it's a light gray and a dark gray, they subtract from the selection. So all you have to do is circle the areas. You move around the screen and you circle the areas that you want to subtract to make it a nice clean edge. So I'm just looking for all those spaces where the green is showing through her hair 
and I'm just taking those spaces out. And what my feather tool is going to do, and you'll see this later in the video, the feather tool is actually going to blur those spaces so that it's a nice soft edge. I'm going to zoom in. When you zoom in, you have to use both fingers. To zoom out, you just pinch going out, and then you'll be able to see your full image. Once it looks the way that you want it to look, you can click on the layer mask. Again, it's on the right side. It's the one that looks like the Japanese flag. It's a white rectangle with a circle in the middle. Just go ahead and create your layer mask. What it will do is delete the background. And then you can zoom in and you can see how the feathering kind of feathered off the sides. You see that the it's a little blurry where I feathered. I accidentally just selected an area, so I'm just going to press deselect. Sometimes your fingers will accidentally select something. When that happens, don't panic, just press deselect. Now what I want to do, I don't want my I, I don't want my background to be empty. I want it to be white. So I'm going to create a new layer. The new layer icon is the little square with the plus sign. If you notice that it creates the new layer and it puts it in the middle. So I'm going to hold down on that layer and I'm going to drag it down to the bottom so that it's going to be in the background. I don't want it to be above my portrait. We're going to use the same tool that we used for the shadow of your last project where you fill it in with the paint bucket. So I'm going to select my paint bucket my color is already set at white, but if it yours wasn't, you just select the, the circle with the color, and then you can pick the color white at the top corner. In order to fill the background, you have to make sure you're highlighted on the bottom layer, your empty layer, and then you just click on the background, and it's going to fill your layer with a white color. So now I'm going to go back to the center layer. I'm going to highlight my portrait layer. I'm going to go to the, the three dots at the right side of the screen. This is where I'm going to merge down my layer so that they're one layer again. So now my background and my portrait are the same layer. I'm going to rename my layer so that you guys know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about my layers. I'm going to label it portrait. Okay, hopefully everyone is following along. If not, you can always go back, press pause. You can restart if you get kind of messed up, if your layers get all messed up. Um, you guys can rewatch this as many times as you need. Now what I want to do is reselect my image. This time it's going to be easier because the background is completely solid white. So I just go back to my lasso tool. I hold it down with my finger. I go to select subject and she's selected. I see my marching ants. That's good. You want to see your little marching ants. Now what I want to do is I want to go t back to the top of my nature layer and select that layer and highlight it blue. This time I'm going to turn the invisibility back on so that I could see the background. I do it the same way. I click on the eyeball and the mountains should reappear. You should still see the marching ants above the background, the highlighted area of your subject. That's good if you do see them. Now we're going to put a layer mask on the nature layer. So the same way we did with the portrait layer, we're going to click on the layer mask icon. It's a white uh, rectangle with a black circle. It brings, it brings you to this image. So I'm just going to show you because I can't describe it. 
It's the outline of your image with mountains filled in the middle. What we want to do now is make her face come back. We want to see some of her face. So we're going to go to our blending modes. Our blending modes are in our layer options. They look like three lines with three circles in them. We're going to take the opacity from 100 and I'm going to bring it down to 70. Just so I could see her face start to show through. Does, it doesn't have to be too much because the next step will make it show through even more. The next step is changing the, the blending mode. So right now our blending mode is at normal. We're going to click the word normal and we're going to change it to the word lighten. L-I-G-H-T-E-N. And our face comes back a little bit more. At this point, you guys can start to reveal and hide things from the mask, the layer mask. Um, to do that, you have to paint with your paintbrush. So I'm going to go to my paintbrush. Remember we talked about the different types of um, options that the paintbrush has? So if you click on the paintbrush, the bottom circle is the hardness. So that's sort of like around the edge of the paintbrush. How hard is it? Is it soft? Is it hard? As you go up, it gets harder. As you go down, the edges soften. The, the middle one that looks like a square with um, the opacity in it. So this is how much of the paintbrush is see-through. So if you have 100% opacity, it's very strong. If you bring it down, it becomes a little bit more see-through. I like to keep both of my, my um, hardness and my opacity at a low level because it brings it back slower. You could always go back if you need to. The one with the size, the, uh, the numbers, that's called your brush size. So right now it's at a 93. Brush size, it shows you at the side what it's going to look like. You can go really large, you can go small. If you want to go small, bring it down. I like to keep it at a medium size, so like 61 is, that, is where it's at right now. And then the color is going to depend on what you want to do. If you want to hide something, you have to use the color black. So when I use the color black, it's going to hide my image. So it's hiding the mountain layer. But what it's, what it's also doing is it's bringing forward her face. So if I want to see her face more, I'm going to use black. If I want to see her face less, I would change it to white. So it's going to reveal your mountains again. So you guys could practice with that until you get to a point where you like it. Once you like it, that's not the only way that you can edit the image. You can also add what's called a clipped adjustment. So underneath our blending mode, it has a little, I used to call this the Starbucks cookie when I was first teaching this, because Starbucks used to have a cookie that was half black, half white. I don't know if they still do. Um, but I call it the Starbucks cookie. It's your adjustment clipped. Um, when you click on it, it gives you all of these options. These can be used for any photo. Brightness, contrast, black and white, color balance, curves, hue saturation, vibrance, levels, and exposure. For this one, all I'm going to ask you to work on is brightness and contrast. So when you add the brightness, you can see that the lights show better. When you add contrast, it's really noticeable in the mountains, um, the darkness comes in. So it depends on how you want it to look. Do you want it to look very light? Do you want it to look not as light? You can decide on your own. 
all of these options for um, like brightness and contrast and all of those other um, options that's personal choice I'm never going to tell you what percentage to use and all of that so if you're going to use clipped adjustments those are going to be your personal preference okay at this point if I like the way it looks I'm going to say I can go ahead and save it so I'm going to go to my three dots. I always like to merge my layers before I do anything. So I'm going to go ahead, click the three dots, and then select Merge Visible. So it's all one layer. Then I'm going to go, just like you guys did last project, I'm going to go to the little square with the arrow facing up. I'm going to go to publish and export. I want to make sure, because I'm done working, so I, I can save it now as a JPEG. If I was still working and I needed to see all my layers, I would save it as a PSD file. Quality is going to stay 12. I press the word export. This is where it pops up for you guys to save it to Schoology. I don't have Schoology as an option because I'm not turning this in. So I'm going to save my image. You guys are going to save only this photo to the Portrait in Nature double exposure folder. I will create a separate folder for your other three images. Those are not going to be due until a later date. So we still have next week to work on them in class. And it, depending on how far you guys get next week is when I'm going to set the due date. But it's not going to be before the 9th. It's going to be after September 9th. Okay, with that being said, that's the end of the tutorial. Hopefully that helped you guys. Uh, 